Okay, so shall we just? Um, I think let's 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 open with a scripture, then we will we, then we will pray. Mm-hmm. Can we go to Job, Job chapter ten? You know, as 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 you may have an idea, Job Job had a very a different experience with God, and uh, in the whole episode of having of God dealing with him and the enemy involved, there were a lot of conversations that he used to have with God, and there was a lot of reflections that he would have uh, as he looked at the situation in which he was passing through. And in chapter 10, reading from. Um, Verses 8, the Bible says, Thine hands have made me and fashioned me together around about, yet thou dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou hast made me as the clay, and will that bring, bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured me out like milk and cuddled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me, that's 11, Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and hast faced me with bone and sinews. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. 13, And these things hast thou hid in my heart, and I know that this is within thee. Amen. You know, Job was reflecting with an understanding that no matter what he was going through, he was a creation of God. So what I was trying to put across to us is, is the realization of who we are. We are a creation of God. Amen. Let me just read um, Job 10 verses 12. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. Amen. Amen. So Job had a realization and an understanding that God was his creator. Regardless of the situation and the period in which he was, he did not look to the left or to the right. He focused his eyes on God with a deeper and greater understanding. So with that in mind this morning, we shall pray and then we shall praise God in worship and praise with an understanding that we are giving praise and glory to a God who is our creator. He who knitted us together to be who we are today. Amen. Amen. Shall we just pray? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we exhort you this morning. We thank you and we give you praise because you are God. Yes, oh God. Father, we acknowledge your Lordship over our lives. In the name of Jesus. And we confess with our mouths, my Father, that there is no God besides you. Yes, my Father. And that Jesus Christ is Lord who has redeemed us from the pit of, of hell. Yes. And set us free from every sin yes. and every entanglement. Mm. Thank you for the freedom. Father, we bless you for the gift of life this morning. As we begin, oh God, we pray, Spirit of the living God, may you come and glorify Jesus among us. May you alone have your own special way. We welcome you. May you grant us utterance, my Father. As we sing songs of praise, may you receive honor. As we sing songs of worship, may you be glorified. We sanctify this place, my Father. And we sanctify every home of every man and woman hearing this word, my Father. That must let there be a visitation this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, I evoke the power of the blood. 
this morning I pray for forgiveness, oh God. On my own behalf, my Father, on behalf of the church, I pray, my Father, mercy. Let the mercies of the Lord that, oh God, surpasses, oh God, all human understanding reign in the hearts and lives of the people today. Let your mercies be new this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that judgment pass over because of the blood, my Father. We silence the voice of the accuser, even in the name of Jesus. We pray, let your grace reign. Let your grace reign and let your blood speak this morning as we glorify and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving in our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you are doing? Are we still doing well? <laughs> uh, last week we did share a message which was a bit uh, quite hard and heavy uh, because it, was, it wasn't a common message that you hear in churches. What, what, what I was trying to bring to your attention is that, you know, you are a prized possession as far as God is concerned. Amen. You are a people that God holds jealously. Even as much as in the eyes of wicked men, they are looking at us like statistics. And uh, when God took time to create man in his own image, and he loved him and he said it was good, to the wicked men, men have been reduced to statistics. When you, if you look at the equation I gave you yesterday, the, 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 the subject of the formula was carbon dioxide. In the quest to reduce carbon dioxide, they want to reduce mankind, but it will not happen. Amen. And I want you to know that the Lord God of glory is on the throne. Only that which the Lord determines and allows shall be. Let your heart be comforted. Let your spirits be happy. For the Lord God, your, for our God and our Lord is on the throne. Amen. Amen. Now this morning, I want to share a word which is uh, I've titled, He Will Do It His Way. Amen. Amen. He Will Do It His Way. As, you, as I have time and again shared, I minister the word that ministers to my heart first. Amen. I minister the word that, that has brought a transformation in my life that when I sit and listen, I hear God ministering to me. And I know if God is ministering to me, he must be able to minister to someone else. Amen. Amen. And, and the first question I want to ask is, what is anxiety? Amen. What is anxiety? Anxiety is the feeling of remorse, such as worry, and fear. Amen. That's anxiety. And when you have anxiety, you become what? Anxious. Okay? And being anxious, if you are writing, you know, it's, 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 it's very easy for you to be wary and to be, to, be, to be fearful because you are anxious. So, being anxious can be described as being very eager or concerned to do something or waiting for something to happen. So if you want to if you are if you are desiring to do something or you are waiting for something to happen and it's not happening, automatically you start becoming anxious. Okay? So when I speak about anxiety or being anxious, I have lived at one point a life of anxiety. And I will just share a little bit of my story. And I know most of us in this place and everyone listening would relate. I was very anxious growing up because I didn't know what my tomorrow held or what my tomorrow will be like. You know, for those who do not know, 
some of you are aware that I've shared before that my, my, my mom died when I was barely a teenage, about 15 years old. And I had never seen my dad. So I grew up around cousins, uncles, and aunties. Now, my mom was a teacher and she taught for a couple of years. By the time I was born, she was already a teacher. So, I mean, she, yeah, she was basically teaching or going to college anyway. So I can say roughly she must have been teaching for not less than 10 years at the time of her passing. And it was, there was hope that if we got her pension, then I can go to school and my siblings, we can go to school. But it so happened that even today as I speak to you, I've got no idea who inherited my, father, my mother's pension. Amen. He will do it his way. Amen. He will do it his way. My worry was my education. And it so happened that if all things were being equal in my life, I would have finished school in 97. But because my ways are not God's ways, I lost school for two years. And now you can imagine my anxiety levels at the time. And I'm talking about Africa where jobs are limited and you need to have some qualification if you're going to have some job of some sort. So when I talk about anxiety, I'm not talking from without. And when I talk about the effects of anxiety, I have lived them through. He will do it his way. Amen. When I was hopeful, after losing school for two years, I went and found school in a place okay in this context i would say a pub but when i say a pub for the guys in europe and here in the uk what builds in your mind is a lovely pub that you have seen around this place but when i talk about a pub in the african context and zambia in particular it is a messed up place. So this pub was divided into two. This side, it was a pub. On the other side, it was a school. The Lord will do it his way. Amen. Amen. In that class, I think we were about five year nines because I had dropped school in my year nine. So I, after those, after a, a year or two, after two years, I went back to the same grade, now self-sponsored, in this place which was a makeshift of a school. And God being God, out of that class, I was the only one that passed. Anxiety. So when I talk about anxiety, I know what it means to be anxious. Anxiety is when a man or a woman or indeed a person looks at the circumstances around them in the light of their abilities. When you are looking at the circumstances surrounding you in the light of your abilities, your strength, your financial capacity, your education, and you see yourself being limited in relation to what is being dictated at the time. In the absence of God, men are anxious. In the absence of God, men are anxious. This time I've described to you, I was not yet saved. But when I got saved, 
In my year 10, I met a very good friend of mine, was my classmate, Kennedy, and we planned of becoming economists. But yet in my heart of hearts, the true desire in my heart was for me to become a pilot. But looking around my circumstances and my capabilities, I could not even begin thinking about becoming a pilot, let alone going to university. Because I had no abilities. I looked around you within the means and circumstances surrounding me and I found myself failing. I did not have the capacity. But I think at age 17 or somewhere about there, I came to know the Lord. And there was a shift in my life that I began trusting God. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 28. The Lord will do it His way. Amen. The Bible records. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Number one. To them who are called according to his purpose. Now before we even go any further. I want you to understand that by virtue of you being a believer. You have been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. You have been called according to his purpose. So. The first thing God is saying is. To them that love God. How do you love God? Matthew 22, 37. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Amen? So the loving of God is not half-hearted. So if things are going to work for good, it will not help for you to be anxious. It will help if you love the Lord. And when I say love the Lord, don't love the Lord half-hearted. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul or strength. Because if you love the Lord with, with your all, you will learn to trust in God. If you love the Lord on the basis of the qualification that you have, you have a divided mind. And the secondly is that you need to understand that regardless of the circumstances surrounding you, you have been called according to his purpose. And there is something about God. God will always preserve his purpose in man. Always. It didn't matter how many years Israel was in bondage. Israel was a promise unto Abraham. And that purpose for God to be glorified and make them a nation, God preserved. Regardless of their wicked ways, time and again failing him. But because of the purpose in them, God preserved. Amen. Amen. Do you know why you are still alive today? Do you know why you are still well in body and not in the hospital? Yes. Purpose. Yes. Purpose. There is purpose in you that the Lord God Almighty is preserving. And as long as that purpose stands and you have not finished the purpose that God established you here on earth, you shall live and not die. You will be preserved in the name of Jesus. And you, it will not happen the way you are picturing or vision or imagining. He will do it his way. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 1. I want your faith to arise this morning. I want you to shift your, your focus from your, your abilities, your skills, 
the, the qualifications that you have earned over years, the, the experience you have gained, and look up to God. If, if only you knew this God we save, who he is and how capable he is. The challenge is that we look up to God with means within ourselves. It's like we, 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 we are on crossroads. One time, on the other leg, we know that, okay, as long as my career is going, I am okay in God. But we, we, when the career is gone, and then all hope is lost, and we begin to, 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 to scheme, how do I make ends meet? How do I stand? How do I pull this deal? How do I... Because we are looking within ourselves. And the more we look within ourselves of how do I, how do I, we find ourselves limited and failing. He will do it his way. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 1 verses 9. He has saved us. He has done what? He has saved us. Hallelujah. Before we will proceed, let that, let that sink in our hearts. He has saved us Amen. and called us an holy calling. He has not just saved us. He has called us. That is why you are seated there listening to this word. Because he has called. If he didn't call, you would have been in the pub right now. Save for coronavirus, you would have been drinking at home. Or probably you would have been on a, a different project. But you have spared time to sit and sup at the table of the Lord. Why? Because he has called. And you are obedient. You have hearkened unto the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He who hath saved us and called us with unholy calling. Listen, not according to our works. But according to his own what? Purpose and grace. Listen to me, ma'am. It's got nothing to do with you. Hear me, sir. It's got nothing to do with you. His purpose in you, that will the Lord protect. Amen. Amen. Not according to our works. It's not that we have things we have done. But according to his purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Listen to me. You are not a mistake. There is no one who is a mistake in this world. Even at the point where the world is now and things seem to be going pear-shaped, listen, you are still in this world. You are the purpose of God and He's still mindful of you. In as much as things seem not to be in alignment when you look around, He will do it His way. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pause for a moment. I want you to pause for a moment and reflect. Now, tell your inner man. Tell Laston. Tell your inner man. Tell him to sit down. Tell yourselves to sit down. Don't be anxious for nothing. Tell yourself to say, last one, sit down. Amen. You know, let me just give you a small example. Um, uh, one of my friend, one of my friend I used to fly with, he was flying a 737 at, his, at, at some point. And uh, he was telling me what his instructor had taught him. He said, he was given an emergency, which was an engine failure after takeoff. And according to him, he began panicking and touching anything and everything. And the instructor told him, you know what, Brandon? Sit on your hands and relax. Why? This aircraft has been made with two powerful engine, engines but it has been calibrated in such a way that it should be able to fly on one engine with maximum weight and of takeoff and be able to fly, climb, and come back and land safely. 
So just because you have lost one engine, it's not a call for panic and start touching wrong things because you end up killing the live engine. Is that making sense? So talk to yourself. Tell yourself to relax and sit down. And remind last one, remind yourself to say, he will do it his way. Amen. He will do it his way. Papa, he will do it his way. Amen. Purpose in you. Yeah. He will do it his way. Amen. Hallelujah. When I was at school, scheming with my friend, in our own ideas, we are thinking we'll become, we'll become economists. And as, as life may have it, when we finished school, we wrote our exams. The following year, my friend, because the mother worked for the university, the University of Zambia, the mother organized the place for him. Yes, we all had passed, we had good results. So he, he had qualified on merit, but he was supposed to go the following year as per the standard of the curricula in Zambia. But because the mother was at the university, the mother organized him in the same year and squeezed him in because he had good results just like me, and he got a place in the university. And here is my friend who've been scheming and planning with to go to the university and study economics. And now picture me. My best friend has gone and is in class. He is at the University of Zambia doing economics. And there I am, no idea. Not even shoes to begin with. Not even clothes. Still borrowing clothes from my cousins. He will do it his way. Economics was a career that I picked with my friend at school. But in my heart of hearts, from the time I was five, I desired to be a pilot. The Lord will preserve the purpose in you. Hear me. I was a believer. But I didn't know that God had held me in his hands. If you know that you are hemmed up in the palms of the Lord, your heart will be settled. Your tomorrow will be settled. Your tomorrow is secure. And why am I telling you positively, and with all my strength to say your tomorrow is secure because you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. As life may have it, the following year, because I was a believer, listen how God works. God, God is, you know, who can fathom the mind of God? Who can grasp the infinite wisdom of God? No one. No one. I was a believer and I was committed in God. Half of my time when I finished school, I never, I barely stayed at home. I was about the, the business of God. I would sleep in church from Friday, Saturday, and only go to, to, to go home on Monday, I mean on a Sunday. And on a Monday, I would go back because a Monday was known as the pastor's rest day. So I went to fill in the gap for the position of the pastors for people who wanted prayer and anything that they desired in the absence of pastors. Tuesday, it was a Bible study. Wednesday, we had a group we had formed as young men and women from different churches. Churches We called it Interdenomination uh, Fellowship. On a Thursday, it was a home sale from my church. On a Friday afternoon, I left. Saturday, it was youth meeting. So that was somehow my life. Now listen how faithful God is. At the youth meeting when I got my results, I gave a testimony and I said, regardless of my troubles, I have passed with very good results and I, had, I was doing pure sciences, what you guys call, I think, top set. Difficult subjects. And there was this old man. What the old man was doing at the youth camp, only God knows. This old man was a flight sergeant at the time from the Air Force. And when I gave my testimony, the following day on Sunday, he called me on the side and said, young man, I was at the youth yesterday and I heard you have got very good results. Listen, there are recruitment going on. There's recruitment session going on right, I think, uh, next week. It will be held in Kawe. With your results, go and try aircrew. 
Now, I, I want you to hear God. Go and try air crew. And if you try air crew with your results, you will get it. And go for the officer's side. God. The dream that I had in my heart, and I thought it had died and it's not possible. I went for, for, for interviews, and out of 1,000 people, believe me, 32 people were picked to become pilots. And out of the 32 that went for training in the Air Force, 16 became pilots. And I was one among those 16. Now, the, the, the university I desired, which I was going to struggle with fees, which I was going to struggle with clothes, with food, God gave me the desires of my heart for free. Yeah. I was trained as a pilot without a dime. I didn't pay a single thing. I was fed during training. I was housed and clothed during training. And I was being paid while training. He will do it yes. his way. Sit down. Tell yourself, sit down. Let God arise. Amen. Sit down. Let God arise. Amen. He will do it his way. Yes. Your ways are not his ways. Yes. Come with me to Luke chapter 12. As you may have known me by now, I love long reads because they create context. Amen. It's very easy for you to lose uh, information in the abstract if you are picking scripture here and there. Amen. Luke 12, verses 22. Now, this is Jesus Christ talking not to the, cloud, the crowds like he was doing, preaching to everyone and anyone. He is talking to the disciples. Amen. This is the message to the believers. So, when the Bible says, and he said unto the disciples, I want you to picture yourself in that position. Amen. You are a believer. You are the disciple of God. Hallelujah. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life. The NIV says, do not worry about your life. Amen. What ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Listen how mindful God is. He's not just mindful about what you're going to eat tomorrow for your health. He's mindful of what you need to wear. Remember, this is a message to the disciples, the believers. So, there is no need for you to begin worrying. Hear me and hear what the word of the Lord is saying. Amen. Amen. 23. The life is more than meat. And the body is more than raiment. In other words, life is more than food. <laughs> Don't worry. And he says, the body, I would rather you are healthy than you worrying about raiment or clothes. How we spend 5,000 worth of money going to buy a shoe. I love suits, by the way. <laughs> but the suits are not more important than what? The body. Because if this body is broken, where am I going to put the suit? If this body is sick in the hospital, where am I going to put this, this suit? Nowhere. So, salvation is more important than the things of the what? Of the world. Because once you have salvation, you have eternal life. Anything else will do what? Come to an end. Sit on your hands. Tell yourself, last one, relax. Hallelujah. 24. Consider the ravens. Now, that word raven, a raven is, 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 is a bird which is associated mostly with evil or uncleanliness. Am I right? Amen? The raven is mostly associated with 
evil or uncleanliness. And God is pointing to say, look, even the raven, which is an unclean bird, I feed it. I feed it with meat. How about you, the creation of God? Why are you worried? How about you? No, there is coronavirus. Everyone is dying left, right, center. It's, it's not your portion. It's not your portion. It is not your portion. Faith. Faith. Are you hearing me? You will live to the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You will live to the glory of the Lord. All of us, we have life. Yeah. We have life. Not because man dictates. No, 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 no. Yeah. God yes. is mindful over us. Yeah. And Viv, you will live yes, to the glory of the Lord. Amen. Man cannot dictate who we are or where we go or what we do tomorrow. Amen. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than, how much more ye better than fowls? You are better than the birds of the air. 25. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit. One cubit. <laughs> he says, if you, no matter how much you worry, you cannot even increase your height by a cubit. And he says to him, increasing, increasing your height by a cubit, he says, and which of you, by taking thought, can add um, uh, to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, to him God, adding your height even by one meter is the simplest thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you understand in the mind of God here. Why are we worried? He will not do it according to the way we've planned. He will do it his way. 7 to 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these flowers. Look at how God is boasting. Look at how proud God is about you. Look at the flowers. They are so beautiful. Even Solomon, the man who had the most wealth and, uh, and everything, that pomp and splendor, he did not dress like the beautiful flowers that you see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And if then God so clothed the grass, the grass, the grass, listen to me, the grass, if God so clothed the grass, which is to today in the field and then to, and, 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 and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? <laughs> 29. And seek not ye what, shall, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be of a doubtful mind. Underline that. Yeah. Or be of a doubtful mind. For all things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Who knoweth? Who knoweth that you have need of these things? Your Father, your Father, your Father, your Father. Your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. The more you remain faithful in God, you are praying, you are reading the word, you are building yourself in the innermost thing, in your, in your, in your innermost faith, things will be added unto you. I didn't go soliciting, soliciting at the Air Force with a general who is who. I didn't even know anyone at the Air Force. But the Lord, because I was faithful to God, the Lord began to add things unto me. All my worries were taken care of. Because I began trusting in God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's very easy. You 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 you're sitting and you're thinking but uh last one you don't understand my my situation. You you don't understand. You cannot relate my 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 wife and myself are not in good terms. My children can't talk to me. I have uh, I have lost a job. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. You can put any circumstance that you that is around there and you are asking yourself how will it be? And I I know you could have been planning and thinking look he will do it his way. He will do it his way. Like my friend was told, sit on your hands and relax. Your position is to get right with God. Position yourself in God and God will do everything his way. It's very easy to be disappointed. When you have planned and put everything together and you have aligned things, you know, it's especially like right now. I was I was listening on the news that that there's about 20 million people in the United States who have lost their jobs. You can imagine imagine you are hearing that and you are in the United States. It's very very disheartening. But the Bible tells me my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and trust me my God is rich. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. He will not do it the way you are thinking. Trust me. I didn't know that I would ever fly, but I flew. Yeah. And for one information, I was a good student. Mm. By God's grace. Yes. He is a good God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, First Peter This is my assurance to you. Hallelujah. You are asking me but last one you don't understand. All these troubles, I don't even know where my next meal will come from. I don't know. I have got a chronic disease. and the doctors have said this is cancer until death do us part listen to me there's a god in heaven amen he's a god of life and he's a creator of all creation all things are hemmed up in him even every hopeless situation if if you allow me lazarus was in the grave for four days to the point where when he, when the sister was asked she said but my lord he must be thinking by now he, he, he is dead it's 3 4 days ago when we buried him but when the god himself who is life showed on the scene even in the decayed moment in the decayed composition standing the body had to obey and come back to life because the fullness of life itself had showed up I don't know how hopeless your situation is. The God of life he will show up. When he shows up, you are a child of God. Remember where we began? And because of the purpose he has put in you, trust me. <laughs> the sun will shine again and it is shining even now. Not the way you thought it would be, not the way you had planned, but his way I had I had in road for a masters and I have pulled out I have quit school He will do it yes, his, his way, way. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. He will do it his way Amen. and that's my faith Amen. First Peter chapter 5 Don't worry Don't worry Hallelujah First Peter chapter 5 The Bible records Humble yourselves therefore under the might hand of God that he may exalt you in due time in due time 
Your position is to humble yourself. Lord, I have tried everything. Lord, I have tried my ways. It is not working out. I had hoped that when I am 42, I should have a master's. But it's not possible. I do not have the ways and the means. Lord, I leave it to you. In due time, he will exhort you. Casting all your cares upon him. For he cares for you. Oh my God. Casting all your cares. How many cares? How many cares are you supposed to cast on God? All your cares. Why? Because he cares for you. You are busy worried. Worrying about tomorrow. Worrying about yesterday. Worrying about the things you did when you were four years old. Worrying about the thing that happened when you were 12. Come on, give yourself a break. Come on. The Lord cares for you. The Lord loves you. It may not be working out the way you thought it would. He will do it His way. Amen. Hallelujah. If I take you back to Luke 12, don't turn there. That's the one we've just been reading. Amen. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be of, doubt, of a doubtful mind. For all things do the nations of the earth, of the world, seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of those things. Everyone is looking for a job. Yeah. Everyone is looking for money. Everyone is looking. Everyone is, don't be anxious. Your father knows that the world is looking for them. But I know that you want those things. And I will give them to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your father. Who knows? Your father. Not your boss. Not my company. I'm thinking right now. The, the, I'm in aviation. And I look around. They're, they're talking about maybe a, a aviation coming back. But they are questioning, how are people going to travel when someone travels to a country, then they are quarantined for 14 days? How do you do business? How do you go for a holiday? And when I look around, will I still have a job a month from now? And I'm not worried. Yeah. I'm not worried at all. Because my God is not dead. Yeah. I have a father who lives forever. Yeah. And as long as I'm still alive, it means there is purpose inside me. And as long as there is purpose inside me, that will my Father, God, my Creator, preserve and protect. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He may not do it the way I feel, I feel or I think. Mm. He will do it His way. Yes. As we conclude, a very common scripture, Isaiah 55. Very common scripture, Isaiah 55, verses 6. To nine. And the Bible reads, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon eight that's where my concern is for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So stop your scheming and planning and you are thinking within the confines of your capabilities and abilities and trust me you will fail and you'll be anxious and you die of depression. Cast your cares on God. Cast your cares on God. He will do it His way in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you all. Hallelujah.
Thank you.